My name is Mike Aben and welcome to my KSP campaign. We're out here with the Model K2 once again doing, well, what else is new with this thing? It's what it's for. It's for scrounging up science and we are on our way to, there it is, yes, the monolith, the monolith to its full size and glory. I'm not sure about other people, but ever since KSP went full release, this monolith was a sad fix sim or, uh, imitation of what it was in the past, most of it being uh, glitched into the ground, but now it is at its full height. Oh yes, look at that. And we're here, of course, collecting science with Wilman and the now level 3 scientist Chrissy. And we are here in the shores collecting science, and we're also going to be going out to the grasslands and the tundra and also making our way out to the highlands and the reason for that is as you might recall towards the end of the last episode I came a couple of dozen science points short sorry of uh, having enough science to unlock another tier 8 science node a tier 8 science node I really really want before I start building my crafts that are going to be going out to Drez uh, I have a Drez window coming up in a relatively short period of time in a little less than 40 days and I would really like to hit that particular transfer window but of course to do that I need to get some vehicles into Kerbal Construction Times building queue and in order to do that there's some science I really would like to unlock first so that's why we're here but of course that's going to have to be for a future episode uh, in this episode what you'll be seeing is the Karayan 1 will be heading off on its next mission out to the moon to rendezvous with the arm B and its asteroid which I have officially designated as asteroid Yoi uh, mostly because Y-O-I was uh, the call letters of the asteroid number that it was generated but we'll uh We'll stick with Yoi from now on. Now that it's captured about the moon, I think it officially does require a name. We'll also be launching um, the Kegel 3, my next Kerbin system, my next generation Kerbin system runabout that will be launched and making its way up to Kerbin Station. Before we get to any of that, uh, let's see what the science hall is from this little mission. Okay, 110 science, giving me a total of 641 science. I only need 550 for specialized electrics. That's what I'm interested in. Uh, mostly for this Comtex XPVR210 antenna. I'll explain why that antenna is important in regards to remote tech uh, when time comes. But suffice to say, for now, it helps one deal with that uh, signal delay, which is obviously going to be a big deal when we're way out towards Drez. And with the Kerbal Construction Time upgrade point that I earned from the unlocking of that science node, I put that towards research and development, and that means that specialized electrics will be researched in just a little over four days. And once that's out of the way, it's time for me to start building for these Drez missions. But in the meantime, the Karayan 1 is in need of a little bit of support before it's ready to move on. This is just a supply vehicle. Actually, it's mostly just a fuel barge. Um, Karayan, or Kerbin Station is mostly empty of fuel. It is. It was primarily built as a staging area and it's primarily there to hold fuel and fuel up these Kerbin system runabouts and uh, well it's running pretty dry. So while part of this is actually pretty standard fare but part of it is a little bit new. This is featuring a couple of new parts that I've not used before. One is this homegrown rocket Lima capsule at the front here. Uh, which is great because it is integrated with Kerbal inventory system so that you can use it to uh, hold all kinds of goodies. And also on this thing is the Titan 450 storage tank, which comes from the Mark 1 Laboratory Extensions mod, a mod that you'll be seeing a little bit more of very shortly with the Kegel 3. Okay. There we are, there we're docked. <laughs> okay, and with that done, we have some resources that need to get transferred over to both the station and to the Karayan 1. This thing contains a lot more fuel and monoprop than the Karayan 1 will need for just a single mission. And then once that was accomplished, it was time to start thinking about our moon transfer because, um, the asteroid that we want to rendezvous with is in a polar orbit. And uh, when it comes to the moon, I don't 
you know, with Minmus, I don't mind just launching and then doing the inclination changes around Minmus. Minmus, the gravity is so small, the inclination changes don't cost too much. And also, Minmus takes, what is, like 26 days, I think, to do an orbit. So to wait for the orbits to line up the way you want takes so long. Uh, the moon only does six days to do an orbit, so you can wait. At the most, it's going to be three days for the orbits to line up. It's, it, in my mind, it's worth it to save the inclination cost. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use the pop ahead and orbit feature. I'm using precise node, of course, but uh, this feature also exists in the stock maneuver node editors. I just like this precise node. Okay, so there we go. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the arm B's orbit, which is that lower satellite there around the moon the lowest one in the moon's orbit and i'm just popping ahead of orbit and then adjusting the timing in order for the trajectory to intersect again with the moon and i continue with this continuing moving in the future until i get to the point where my trajectory is running parallel to the plane of the polar orbit once that incoming trajectory is parallel to that polar, the plane of that polar orbit, that's when you're going to want to do that transfer burn. And uh, it takes a little bit of playing around, but as you can see, I am closing in on it right about there. Now, Crying One is still on the station, so I will be deleting this node after this, but I can see now on the time that this is going to be in about two days. So I know in about two days, I'm gonna be wanting to do my transfer to the moon. In the meantime, there is work to be done. Uh, these nice new storage containers on the supply barge are internal. And between internal containers, you can just move, you know, open up their two menus and just move items between the two inventory menus. Unfortunately, on the station, all but one of the storage containers are external, which means that somebody's got to go out there and schlep all these parts around to, using an EVA and these backpack KAS storage containers and well it's Bartner again isn't it Bartner's going to be having to move this stuff around uh there's no way around it other than to do this tedious bit of it but along the way he installed our newest science toy the Gravmax gravioli detector onto the Corian so that the Corian can be collecting new science on its way out and about the moon while it's there Bartner's one reward was being able to be the first to use this nice ladder system now that connects all of the Habitat modules together. Thanks to the parts that were brought up by the supply vehicle. And then once the supply vehicle was deorbited, well, now that we got this GravMax detector here, let's do some gravioli detecting. So uh, we are in low orbit about Kerbin. There is lots of science to collect because this is a biome sensitive science device. So we're going to be collecting this science. We're going to be transmitting what we can. We're going to be processing what we can in the readily available laboratory module and we're going to be collecting more science after it's processed once again so that we have that science to take down to the surface once we have a chance. This should turn into, just right here, quite a bit of science. And there's one more thing I want to do before I get ready to send the Kegel on, or the Corian on its way, and that is to check in on the Kegel lander that is in orbit about the moon. Um, we need to install a docking port onto it. Oh. What is going on here? <laughs> oh no. Okay, so these are nose cones that are meant to be much, much smaller than this. I'd use tweak scale to shrink down these nose cones so that they, fat, they sat on top of those columns of fuel cans, those Oscar cans. They're supposed to be like 0.65 meter size. But it looks like they've reverted to their 1.875 meter size. Uh, tweak scale seems to have messed up. The docking port, there's supposed to be a docking port in there. Actually, I removed the docking port so we could take some uh, rescued Kerbal debris back to Kerbin. Now, you've seen the Kegel tube before. I used it in a moon landing in the past. And it worked fine. But you can see here actually that the science component is actually a module that is attached to the top. So this thing on its own has no science. 
um, I've since lost, or not lost, but used that module in other places, it's now gone, is the effective thing. So, I was thinking of actually replacing this anyway, because it's going to require a lot of work, and now this fixing of these nose cones, I might be able to get into the save file and fix them, or I might be able to use KAS and remove them and replace them with other nose cones, but, I don't know, I was on the verge of just setting up a new lander anyway. And I think this just tipped it over the edge. I don't think I'm going to use this thing or try to fix it. I think it's too much work. I think it's easier just to send a Kegel 4 out this way. So I'm going to build a new lander, a better lander than this one. And we'll send it out this way. And uh, we'll get the Karayan to rendezvous with it so that they can go land on the moon. I'll also uh, have them probably drop by here and put this thing out of its misery at the same time. But in the meantime, why don't we jump ahead a couple of game days and get the Karayan one on its way to the moon. There we go. We are undocked. And of course, uh, I jumped in here a little bit before the actual transfer window out to the moon that I set up uh, earlier in this video. And after resetting up that maneuver node, it turned out that that's two hours away still, so we might as well just time warp around Urban here. Now, the Karayan 1 is now, of course, detached from the station and completely on its own as far as electrical dependence goes, and it turned out that that single Gigantor was more than adequate to support the electrical demands of the lab module processing science. I got two scientists in there working hard creating science for me from the data that we've collected. But then I also discovered that once the sun went down, uh, this thing went dead pretty quick. There we go. We are out of power. And that's because although I have a lot of electrical generation happening, I am pretty starved when it comes to batteries. This is an old, old vehicle. And at the time I built it, all I had were the little... Um, those little batteries, those ones you get towards the beginning that only hold 100 kilojoules of electrical power each. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll just have to uh, only be able to research science while we're in the sunlight and have to make sure to shut down that lab each time we're about to go into the night side of a particular body that we might be orbiting. But anyway, ooh, right here, the launch pad. It's just completed being conditioned. Well, just so happens I have a vehicle sitting on the pad ready to go. This is the newest of my Kerbin system runabouts. This is the Kegel 3. You might recall that the Kegel 2, which is still in orbit about min mist by the way, but started to have engine problems with the interstellar extended Nerva engines that come with that particular mod. Uh, so I had to build me a Kegel 3. Functionally, it is very much the same type of a vehicle, except this one is going to be built around the, <laughs> get this right, the Mark 1 Laboratory Extensions mod or the Mole mod. So uh, why don't we take a look at the new parts on this thing? All right, there we go. That is an orbit. So Let's take the opportunity to look at this. Then we'll start up here at the front. We use the camera focus changer mod to focus in on each part. So up at the front here, we have the Mark 88 Brumby crew capsule. Can hold two crew. Has built-in RCS. KOS integration, which is really nice. And as you can see, lovely lights up really nicely. Behind that, we have the mole, which is the laboratory uh it's a laboratory part, it's a lab, it can hold two crew as well and do the things that labs can normally do uh, with also having some KIS integration, some KIS storage, that's great. Okay, back here we have, well, good old hitchhiker. So with the hitchhiker now, this thing can carry up to eight crew. And ahead of that, we have another storage container. So this adapter here at the front there is not only an adapter but also a storage container and pushing the whole thing we have the solid core nuclear engines from Kerbal Interstellar extended yes the same engines that are on the defunct Kegel 2 hopefully these won't run into the same problems but I do like those engines 
Like the engines on the Kegel 2, they are running in liquid fuel mode, so no oxidizer on this thing, just liquid fuel. And you can see here as well that I don't have real plume happening with this engine, giving the problems with the Kegel 2 engines. I thought mucking about with config files might not be the way to go. Functionally, there is a lot of overlap between these parts and the homegrown rocket parts but I do like the different aesthetic and there is some integration with other mods that um, Homegrown Rockets does not have. As well, the interiors, by the way, are gorgeous, which unfortunately I can't show you because there is no crew aboard this vehicle just yet. I always send up these sort of things uncrewed and then crew them later. And besides, um, we actually don't have much time to waste. As soon as this thing had docked, it was time to send the Kegel 1 on its way. Here we are, and lights out because, yeah, the batteries are dead again. I gotta get better at managing electricity with this thing. Thankfully, by the time we actually got to our burn location, the sun had come up and we had regained attitude control, and we were able to get ourselves out of here. This also required a mid-course correction burn to get us so that we weren't hitting the moon, but rather uh, getting ready to get into orbit about the moon. And I thought while I was out here, I'd collect some more gravity science and, oh, shoot, highlands. Oh, man. Okay, well, we'll transmit this. And, oh, oh, shoot, I don't have a connection. Okay, i got to find that antenna. The Cunitron can't reach that far. Okay, uh, I do have a bigger antenna. Um, I didn't realize that high gravity science was biome specific. Or else I would have been collecting science all the way up here. And no, this is definitely over the highlands. So we'll transmit that and then we'll collect it again. And we'll, oh, I should have been doing it all the way along. Trying to get the gravity science uh, over all the biomes that I can. Well, we're, we got to go back so we can be, we'll have another opportunity to be collecting gravity science, so that's no big deal. But why don't we jump ahead a day as the Karayan comes screeching over the south pole of the moon, getting ready to perform its capture burn. Of course, we are collecting gravity science all the way down, trying to get as much science out of this as we can, transmitting what we can, and storing the rest. Unfortunately, the lab module here is full of scientific data, so there, we couldn't do any processing, so we'll have to come back and do that later. And it was shortly after performing the capture that I got the notification that Specialized Electrics has finally been researched, and that means it's time for me to start to put together my dress ship. Back at the KSC, I also discovered that I've got enough science now to unlock a tier 7 tech node. And I went with good old nuclear power. This is going to give me fission nuclear reactors. I've been wanting this for quite some time. And it also is going to unlock a whole lot of these Kerbal Interstellar nuclear tech nodes. That'll be a fun thing to explore in the future, but right now I do want to get to starting my Drez vehicle. And I'm not going to show you too much of this. I want to show it to you as I launch and assemble this. This thing is going to end up going into orbit in three separate launches and then assembled in orbit. I'm also thinking that there'll likely be at least three uncrewed support vehicles also going along with this on its way to Dres. So that's a lot of vehicles to be built, a lot of launches to be made. Uh, so they are all going to be taking priority in the vehicle assembly building from here on in. So here I am, I'm pushing what is going to be the habitation module for what I am now calling the Kermes into the building queue. And with a little bit of shuffling about, it's going to be ready in about nine days. And then as further service base become available, as things get built, I'll be pushing more and more in there. I still got 33 days to the actual Dres transfer window. So I think this is going to work out okay. The RMD has been pushed out of the priority list. I only got three service bays going here. I do have an extra bill point. I'm going to put that to service bay number three, get these things all building more quickly and as service bays become available, I'll be putting in more Drez vehicles. But 
seeing those things launch are obviously going to have to be for a future episode. In the meantime, let's rejoin the Karayan 1, which is now closing in on Arm B and Asteroid Yoi. Just going to approach in here cautiously. Always find, even with small asteroids like this, it's just a little bit awkward to know exactly how far away you are. Well, I can see I have the Arm B selected, not the asteroid. Yeah, let, let's let's bring our relative velocity right down to zero. I don't want the Orion drifting into it in the meantime. Then what we'll do is we'll get out Chris Nick here. We do have a few things we want to accomplish while we're here, some of which is experimental. Um, I have not had Kerbals in around asteroids too much, so I'm not 100% sure what you can do and what you can't do, so we're going to see what we can do. But number one is that the RMB, you might recall, thanks to the Dang It mod, uh, had its main battery, in fact, its only battery, really, short out on it. Uh, I was able to get it here nonetheless with very limited battery power, but what I'd like to do is add some batteries to it. So we've got ourselves some of these... Uh, little small 100 kilojoule batteries we're going to attach them on there. Um, I'm also curious because I don't have dang it installed anymore. So I'm curious what's going to happen if I right click. I don't think I should be able to fix the battery. Where? Oh, the battery's back here. There it is. So we'll just right click on the battery. Yeah, I'm not getting anything. It's kind of weird because uh, I see in my part inventory, I still do have spare parts, which is part of the Dang It mod, but uh, clearly that's just a leftover. The functionality of Dang It is gone. So we'll just attach on all of these batteries. Um, the RMB still is going to need fuel. It's pretty much empty as far as fuel goes. Uh, so we'll send over a barge in the future. Not quite sure when in the future because all of those Dres vehicles are going to be taking priority, but sometime in the future. And then we can reuse this and have it go after some other asteroids. So what Bart or Bartner? I keep thinking I'm working with Bartner, but it's Chris Nick who's working here. Uh, Chris Nick's going to attach a small docking port here at the back just so that we can attach a fuel barge to this. Actually, I suspect I could send up a fuel barge with a claw and have it connect to the asteroid, but, and I bet you it would work, but even if it does work, that seems kind of silly that I could transfer fuel through the asteroid. And then once we get Chris Nick back aboard, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send out Bob, our scientist, and he's going to see what science we can collect from the asteroid. I remember from quite some time ago back, when the game was uh, still in development, you could collect surface science here. So Bob's going to go and do that. Yeah, there's no EVA reports to collect around the moon. We've exhausted all of those. We'll get Bob in here nice and close. And then he should be able to collect a surface sample. Okay, there we go. Oh, yep, take sample. Click on that. And 54 science. There we go. Okay, we'll collect this. We'll take it back to the Karayan. We'll transmit what we can, and then we'll send Bob back out here to collect some more that he can take back. But I got one more thing I want to try. Um, I happen to have a 1.25 meter docking port. Actually, really by mistake. Um, that docking port was originally intended for the Kegel 2 that you saw earlier in this episode in its sad, uh, rather sad, put me out of my misery sort of state. But I thought, why don't we see if we can attach this to the asteroid and see if we can not dock the Karayan with it. So we're going to send out Chris Nick once again. And we're going to have to bring the Karayan in really close because Chris Nick can't put a 1.25 meter part into his personal inventory. So he's just going to have to sling it over there. We'll get him into position. Sort of midway between. That should do it. I think he should be able to reach it. And there we go. Okay, grab it. Pull it over. H. That's good. There we go. There we go. Now our asteroid 
has a docking port. So we'll get Chris Nick back aboard. We'll see how this works. Oh, beauty. This is awesome. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Turn the RCS off. Uh, this little shuffle here it took a bit of investigating, but actually what it was, was the uh, Remote Tech Flight Computer, which was active on the Arm B, and then suddenly with the command being from the Korion, it shifted its orientation to match with the Korion. So I ended up turning off the flight computer eventually. But what I'm interested in is, are there like surface science I can get here? Let's open up the materials bay. No, no, we're in space near the moon. Okay, so no science to collect. Well, from that, but yep, we do have near moon gravity science. And of course, this is again biome specific. We are over the highlands here. So what we're going to do is we're going to collect gravity science over all the various biomes around the moon. So we're going to hang out here, I think, for a little bit. And who knows, maybe we'll just kind of hang out here and when the Kegel 4 gets built, we'll send the Kegel 4 and meet the Karayan out here. Maybe I'll leave the Kegel 2 alone for just a little while. There's no reason for us to go down there other than to get rid of it. But uh, I think that's going to have to be for a future episode. So we're going to end this one here. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.